the 9,000 men of the Royal Army who advanced this morning from Nairn with Private Lang, an estimated 50 are dead. But for every one corpse in the Royal Army, there are 24 in the Clan Army. Piled in layers, dead or dying, are 1,200 men, including the brother of Private James Chisholm. There was scarce a soldier or officer of Barrel's fourth of foot who did not kill one or two men each with their bayonets or spontoons. Not a bayonet but was bent and stained with blood to the muzzles of their muskets. All witnesses agreed that if Grapeshot were the king of battles, the bayonet was now the queen of weapons. It is mine and everybody's opinion, boasts a trooper, that no history can brag of so singular a victory. How do you feel? Don't feel nothing, really. Oh, I feel all right. Well, now it's over. p.m. The battalions of Cumberland halt at the lines held by the rebels one hour and eight minutes ago. Thus has ended the last battle to be fought in Britain and the last armed attempt to overthrow its king. The establishment has been saved, peace restored, church, crown, trade and commerce safeguarded. Thus, the Duke of Cumberland won his only victory and Charles suffered his only defeat. His advisers are shortly to urge his instructions for reassembly. He is to reply, do as you wish, only for God's sake, let us go. Charles Edward Stuart, his cause now in ruins, has given one order too many. Charles pitted these men against the modern musket and bayonet, against cavalry and cannon. Thus, in one hour, eight minutes, he has reduced the flower of the Highland clans to twitching, limbless corpses. <laughs> 2 30 p.m. and His Royal Highness the Duke of Cumberland orders rum and brandy, cheese and biscuits for his brave boys. For the wounded and dying clansmen on the moor, there is to be different treatment. All over the battlefield, whilst the Duke of Cumberland eats his lunch, any clansmen seem to be still alive is either slit in the throat, pistol through the head, or bayoneted and trampled on, until, in the words of an eyewitness, the moor was covered with blood, and our British soldiers looked less like Christian men than so many butchers. This rebel host has been most deeply indebted to the public for all the rapine, murder, and cruelty. 
and our men are heartily determined to give them receipt in full. I'm letting my regiments of horse loose after the battle in order they may have some sweets with all their fatigue. Thus, nearly 100 people are to be butchered or maimed on the road to Inverness. Butchered whether or not they took any part in the battle. They, they took my baby. He's only two weeks old. And one of them whirled him around by his leg and threw him onto the ground. This is Jean Clark, aged 28. Cut about the face and body by sabres, she was left lying for dead on the road to Inverness. The soldiers came in and caught him, and Daddy too. But I got away in a through a hole in the wall. How old was your brother? Lachlan was nine. I, I, don't, I don't know where he and Daddy are now. Four p.m. Inverness. James Ray, trooper, Kingston's light horse. The first man of Cumberland's army to enter the Highland capital. The first man to show its inhabitants what is to be expected from an Englishman protecting his liberty and his Protestant religion. <laughs> 